crippling pain due to a series of health conditions, mum of three, Jay Proudman, hit rock bottom, begging her husband to help her end her life. But after researching the benefits of CBD oil, Jade claims her life has been transformed and, more importantly, her children have got their mum back. Well, Jade joins us now alongside Dr Nigat. Welcome both. Lovely nice to see you. you. Thank you for yeah. coming in today. So, you battled with your health since you were a teen, yes. haven't you? Yeah. What have been the issues? So, as a teen, I was diagnosed with uh, chronic fatigue syndrome, um, which was really difficult. It really interrupted um, school life, etc. And then as I continued to age, um, it makes me sound really old, but as I continued to age, I'd sort of got new diagnoses of things. So fibromyalgia, uh, spinal myclonus, which is in the epilepsy family. And I'd always struggled with um, gastrointestinal issues. Um, and then in 2012, I found myself in a situation whereby um, my gut wasn't working very well. I was in a lot of pain, very bloated and I collapsed at home. Um, my husband rushed me to the hospital and my large colon had died um, and I had to go into emergency surgery um, for an ileostomy at the time. Mm. And that sort of kick-started what we call the series of unfortunate events with, with health and surgeries and things. Well, um, it, got, it got very serious to the point where the doctors pretty much said to your family that this was it and there yes. was no more they could do for you and to say goodbye. Yes, so the, my husband and the children had to sort of organise themselves and come and see me. Um, my father and my mother, they didn't really leave my bedside. Um, and it was really traumatic, cos you're just sort of laid thinking, crikey, I'm going to miss out on Everything. all these things that yeah. are going to happen. Um, fortunately, um, we turned a corner mm. um, and sort of tried to sort of continue working on myself to make myself feel better. Um, and then in January of 2016, uh, woke up one morning couldn't move my legs, um, my hands, I was in a lot of pain. And I was diagnosed with reactive arthritis, so everything sort of autoimmune orientated with me. Um, and that's when my mental health began to decline quite significantly. Um, and I think it was the April um, of 2016, the children came running in from school um, and excitedly tried to tell me about their day and I just couldn't keep up with them. Um, and I felt awful. And they sort of left the room looking a bit deflated. Um, and that's the night that I asked my husband to ever dispense my medication. So you were, you were on very, very strong painkillers, the strongest. Yeah. Morphine was involved there. Um, to come to that conclusion with your, with your kids who are you know, sort of telling you um, about their day, mm -hmm. that this, and as you use the word catastrophic, it's yep. this domino of effect yep. of physical, then into mental. Yep. To say to your husband, Leslie, yep. I need you to help me, to assist me in taking my life. Yep. Thankfully, he said no. Yeah. Um, and then started to research. Yes, yeah, so it was Leslie actually that um, mentioned, um, you know, have you looked at cannabis? Wasn't really interested, didn't understand enough about it. Um, and he then asked me to watch a documentary um, by, that had been done by CNN. And it introduces um, the Stanley Brothers who st set up Charlotte's Web. This is the documentary Weed. Yes, yeah. that's correct. Um, and you see the story of this little girl whose life has been completely changed um, by a, a botanical extract. So I was like, uh, OK, I'll try that then, if that's what you want me to do. Not easy to get hold of. No. Because, of course, here in the UK, uh, the, what, the CBD bit, which is the bit we're talking about, wasn't legal until 2018. So you took a bit of a punt and approached the makers of the documentary directly. So I contacted the Stanley Brothers directly. Yeah. I sent a tweet um, out. Not to Joel Stanley. To Joel Stanley, not expecting any form of response. Um, and he tweeted me back, how can I help? Um, so, a week later, I received a care package in the post. Um, from them? From, from them. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and what difference did it make to you? So, I guess it was within 48 hours, I kind of felt like um, my eyeballs had been cleaned and somebody had hoovered the fog out of my head and I just felt alert and upbeat and quite awestruck at how very different I felt completely. Physically, I didn't have anxiety. I was, I was managing that um, and I wasn't reaching for things that I was previously reaching for. So what did, what was the doctor's reaction then to this? They just kind of didn't really say much other than, you know, thanks for telling us you're taking it, but we still recommend you, you take, take these, which is, which is fine. Um, but I just 
the doctors didn't really understand. There wasn't a lot of information about it. Um, so I but just... But to go from that point where you think the only option is to, to take your own life, mm -hmm. to then taking something and seeing a future, because that's what it gave you. Yes, yeah. It was... I was really excited about it, which is why I set up the Savage Cabbage community to talk to people, to share my story. Um, and just say, look, this is my lived experience. You know, if, if, if you're in, you know, a spot, this might mm. be something useful for you. And then over the years, I've learned that, you know, as mammals, we've all got an endocannabinoid system and, and we should all be using these products on a daily anyway as a general wellness supplement. The, the recommendation is obviously do not come off your medication. Absolutely not. Um, the fact is that this doesn't work for everyone mm -hmm. and it didn't cure you. It oh, no. helped you to manage yes. what it is that, that you have. And we've seen you know, all sorts of things on, online um, about sort of miracle cures and mm -hmm. amazing case studies. It is hard to sort out the facts from the fiction mm -hmm. um, and certainly with these companies, yeah. uh, you've got to pick your right company as well and make sure that they are certified yes um are there uh, is this is cbd does it have within it the thc which gives you the high so um my the products that i advocate for are whole plant hemp extracts and yes there are small amounts of thc in that product but the defining factor is you've got cannabis sativa l and it delineates into two channels so you've got medical cannabis which is right over here and then you've got the hemp wellness sector which is here mm. and Whole plant is, in my opinion, what works more efficiently and more effectively um, for people who are wanting to, to use these products. So, yes, there's THC, but not at limits that are in intoxicating. Legal. All legal. They're legal. They're um, listed, sorry, they're listed no. on the novel foods um, list by the Food Standards Agency. There's a public list people can go and view, and products that are listed on that are currently available for sale. So, um, Dr Nigat, let's just explain that a bit more, uh, the difference between THC yeah. and between the CBD oil, because there is a big difference. Yeah, I think the minute people hear cannabis, they instantly think, this is illegal, I can't go near it, but actually cannabis has been around for thousands and thousands of years, and apparently Queen Victoria used a form of cannabis to help with her period's pain, because the gyne historians have seen that possibly she might have had endometriosis, hence mm -hmm. multiple pregnancies, and we know that people do use it for pain, Historically, what happened was in the 1900s, Henry Aslinger came along and said, this causes psychological problems, mental health murders, and let's criminalise this because of his war on drugs. And so it went underground, which meant as healthcare professionals and doctors, we couldn't investigate this plant fully. And so we're reliant on studies which on rats or antidotal studies or antidotal testimony, like a lived-in experience like Jade has got, which isn't accurate medical information. But we know that there's a difference between CBD, which is cannabinoid, and then we've also got THC, and that is the bit that makes you high. Um, and that is the one that gives you the, some of the psychedelic effects, but CBD does not do that. Mm -hmm. And that is where we've got medical cannab uh, cannabinoid. <laughs> medical cannabis, which is available. Um, NICE in November 2021 have actually produced guidelines on when we can use it. It might surprise a lot of the viewers to know that we do use cannabis um, medically and we use it for three specific reasons. We use it for... Um, irretractable epilepsy, so there's very, very difficult epilepsy that's unable to be treated. We use it for um, chemotherapy-induced vomiting and we use it in MS patients who have a lot of spasticity. What we need is better research and better meta-analysis studies I don't, into was, CBD I was, for other health benefits. I was looking earlier on at uh, some of the research that's been done, not on yeah. this. So um, every time we talk about CBD, Somebody says, medical uh, professional will say, there's just not enough research, there's just not enough research. Uh, research. Study shows beneficial effect of electric fans in extreme heat. Research. Quitting smoking after heart attack reduces chest pain and induces uh, the quality of life. Um, statistical analysis reveals Mexican drug war increased homicide rates. So if all of these people are researching all of this stuff, which is known and utterly irrelevant, 
Why aren't there universities across the UK studying CBD? Well, there is now, and this is the great news. We've actually decided there's a global conversation that's happening. And actually, I've actually spoken to Dr. Jeff Chen. The UCLA, UCLA Cannabis Research Initiative has been started, which is medically approved of. We know that they're looking at ca uh, cannabis use. We've had Professor Nutt in the UK, um, lots of individuals who are looking at the fact that the CBD, which is not the bit that makes you high, having a look at that, because it seems to be that there's beneficial effects from sort of pain management all the way up to Parkinson's can I, and can mental health and anxiety. Very quickly, because I think people will listen to this and think well, that sounds interesting and it's obviously not going to have any negative impact. But if you are already taking any current medications, can it interact with that? negatively? So that's a really good question, Holly. There are two things. There's benzodiazepines. We think it makes them work slightly more. But actually, if you remember, we use benzodiazepine for anxiety or sleep, which actually in medical cannabis, we think at the moment from the anecdotal studies and the rat studies actually will make that better for you. But also it can in those who have low blood pressure or in blood pressure medications, make their blood pressure slightly lower. But we know lots of other medications. So classically Viagra actually lowers your blood pressure. And that's how it was discovered because it was a hypertensive medication doesn't stop us using Viagra. And what we need to do is actually take the stigma away from CBD, allow the research to happen so mm. that us as NHS doctors mm. can actually guide patients. The first thing is I'm so proud of Jade for just going to her NHS GP and saying, look, I'm using it. I have patients who come and tell me, but that takes a lot of guts and encouragement mm. and also that really good relationship for the patients. Please tell your GP that you are. Mm. And I know patients who use it for endometriosis, yeah, pain, all sorts of because pain. when you're in that situation, that lived in patient experience is yeah. horrible. Hopefully, the next time Thank we can, we, I mean, it won't happen for the next time because we do this relatively regularly, um, uh, but uh, we'll be able to sit here and say this new research which has been carried out has now proved that, and at least we'll have some major concrete evidence mm. behind it. Because oh. a lot of people will go to their doctors, if they can get to see their doctor, um, will go to their doctor and the doctor will say, or, oh, you know, sort of not sure about this, because they, you don't have that wealth of medical mm. research that's been done. But it's been blown apart at the moment. The positive news is that the research studies are happening. Good. It's available on the NHS. If anyone looks at medical cannabis, you can go onto the NHS website. There's nice guidance around this as well. And also, I think it's just taking away the stigma and the shame and yeah. the fear around it, yeah. which is happening. We've seen that with lots of things, like you guys have covered HRT. I mean, we used to have loads of fear stories about that. So I'm very, very hopeful and I'll join you for thank that. You. <laughs> thank You're you. Thank you. You're okay. I'm okay, thank you. Good. Good, good, good. 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 Thank you. Thank you both.